Hello everybody, my name is Harold Neal and I live in Santo, Vanuatu. I've been here for almost eight years living on my big schooner called Cassiopeia and Cyclone Pam just came ripping through our lovely chain of islands. Luckily, Santo was barely touched and thus everything in Santo is still functioning and working fine, including my boat. I came through the storm unscathed, so it made sense for me to come to Port Villa, where many of my friends live, and a lot of the destruction was. So I brought my scooter and my tools, and I came to help. And what I've discovered while I was here, through the expat community, is that there is a bit of a common theme. And I wanted to make a presentation about uh, my many friends in the expat community that are down in Santo trying to help. I have friends with boats that can deliver things. I have friends that are involved in the freight um, business. I have friends that are involved in radio and the medical emergency arena. And so I began to hear things from them. And so what I'd like to do is put together a presentation that shows these people are ready to help. Everyone in Vanuatu wants to reach out and thank the international community wholeheartedly for the incredible amount of aid and support. The planes are flying in, the goods are coming in, and we've got a minor logistical issue with trying to get them out to where they go. It seems as though the assessment and evaluation of where the goods need to go and how they need to get there has become a cumbersome bottleneck. Uh, we've got uh, five containers of first aid gear that is uh, come from the Red Cross. Tarps, hygiene uh, kits, things like that that are sitting on the wharf and have been for almost five days now. So what I'm trying to create is a is an evaluation of why this is happening so in the future maybe the strategic planning can be a little bit ahead of what it is right now. So I'm going to introduce you to a few different people and I want you to listen to their stories and then I'll talk to you about how we think that maybe we can make this better next time. Hello everybody, this is Kevin Green and Kevin Green operates marine consultancy services and has two barges that run inter island freight between the islands and he like many of us expats is concerned about um, how the logistics are working out for the aid delivery system. Uh, he has two vessels that are prepared and ready to go and so he wants to say what his position is on how to get the aid out to the outer islands. Uh, well, as you say, we've got two vessels. Um, one's are ready, immediately ready to go, fueled and whatnot, but uh, we're just waiting for some direction. We haven't been contacted by anybody. Um, I know there's supplies on the ground, relief supplies. Um, we left Santo on Monday night to distribute um, some food to uh, a few of the islands. Um, the boat's just getting in. It's ready to be unloaded, reloaded and out on a moment's notice. All we need is some direction. The scary part is that everybody wants to go and do something and help, but I mean, without some direction, we risk boats going, or too many boats going to one place that doesn't need any help, and not enough or no boats going to another place that does need the help. So someone just needs to take control, assess the situation. I don't know if that's been done, um, but once they do know, or if they know, which islands, which villages need the assistance, we. It needs to be coordinated. And if I haven't had any uh, communication on any direction, I have no choice. I can't just leave the boat sitting around doing nothing, waiting and waiting. Well, there you go, guys. On the ground, in Port Villa, trying to figure out how to implement the incredible generosity and flood of international aid that has arrived here. Hello, everybody. This is Rick Burns, who works at the DHL office here, and he has uh, suffered a little bit of uh, damage from the cyclone, not to mention that his boat has been sunk out in the harbor, and uh, but he is also a facilitator for trying to get some of the aid and some of the packages that have been sent here by the international community out to the local community. And I just wanted to him to share a little bit about what his experience was because 
he seems to have the same logistical problems that a lot of people do that have to do with filling out forms, etc. What's your story? Yeah, sure. I mean, from Port Vila, I've got a family here, three young boys with, with a local partner. I've been here for 13 odd years. Uh, to the international community, I must say thank you. <clears throat> Aid arrives so quick from Australia and New Zealand. We're out at the airport on Sunday, loading planes out on the tarmac when the uh, Air Force craft came in. What have we now on Thursday? Yeah, Thursday. Uh, those goods are still sitting in warehouses, which is a bit frustrating. I have a lot of the community of Pango approaching me, uh, a rural community close to Port Vila. And we've tried with the community leaders' approaches to Red Cross. Um, they're in a position they didn't even have forms to fill out, so we organised copies across the road. I did copies at the office here, um, took them out to the community, disaster management office, uh, came out later that day and they were told not to complete those and subsequently put out some other forms which have been completed by Pango community today. They have to go to a provincial office to get approved and then aid will start being distributed. It's a little bit frustrating when we've got neighbours without uh, roofs, water, hygiene. I'm already on antibiotics so I can only think about some of the communities out there that need some of these hygiene kits and the like. I know everyone's working hard and it's not an easy task but uh, I think this effort from the crew here on trying to spread the word. Um, I know everyone's doing their job, but it really would be a, a beneficial thing to get uh, some of this aid out to the community without too many more delays. Just, just on our last minute, we're, we're, we're at Freight Logistics, we're ready to go. We've been ready to go since Sunday. Uh, but we can't release anything until we get the OK from the authorities, and that just seems to be where the, the stumbling blocks are. So if they can get their act together a little bit and let us move, we want to be getting things going out of our warehouse because we've got more stuff coming in. Okay. Thanks, Rick. My pleasure. Okay. Hello again. Now we're with Chris Perno of Freight Logistics, who is involved in a lot of the shipping and customs clearance here. And um, he's been involved with the Red Cross as well as a lot of the other aid organizations bringing their stuff in. And Chris, I just wanted to talk to you about where you think the bottleneck is happening because from my what I've heard, all of the stuff is still sitting on the wharf. Um, well, from my perspective, from what I've seen and observed is that you know, a lot of people make a lot of decisions about getting stuff here, how they're going to get it here, what they're going to bring here. So decisions have been made all over the planet, most closely in Australia and New Zealand. Decisions have been made. But what it seems to be, the only thing that's missing is a decision to be made here about where and what and when. The when we can do right now. We've been mobilising stuff left, right and centre from the airport to different places in Vela. We're all good to go. We just need one decision to be made to say, yes, we're going to send this, we're going to send it here, we can take care of all the rest. Simple as that. So no matter what, we should be sending stuff out. We can work out how to control it. Some stuff will go missing, guaranteed. But a huge amount of product will get to where it needs to be, which is to in people's hands to do what they need to do with it. So hygiene kits, canvas, um, water kits, all of it. It can all happen right now. It should be moving to where it needs to be, not waiting for somebody to make a choice, one more decision, about getting it there. Do you think there's something that we could do this afternoon um, to make that start to happen? We're doing it. Are we? <laughs> we are doing it. This is what we're so doing. Hey, listen up. Let's make a decision. Get it moving. We know it's got to move. Move it. We're ready to go. Great. Thank you, Chris. Okay. Hi everybody, now we're with Leigh Salali, who is a radio announcer on FM 107 in the evenings. Of late, she has been opening up our phone lines to the community and assessing what their needs are and hearing directly from the Nevon community about their issues. And so, what have the reports been? What are the people asking for? Thank you very much, Harold. Um, I think so far, since after the cyclone, the radio station has been down for a couple of days. And now we're back on again, and all I do on the radio these days is just tell the people to, you know, get over and start working on things. And uh, we know that all the staff are here, all the reliefs are here, but um, the people are, you know, are, are really uh, desperate to know when and how are they going to receive those reliefs when they send them over. And one more last thing I would like to say is, um, Every time I talk on the radio, and my job is to make people happy at the end of the day <laughs> and keep that smile all the time. And every time I got this, people calling in and said, um, we're happy. But at this time, 
we really wanted to know when are we going to receive those reliefs that we had. We've seen all this plane flying in uh, to Vanuatu, to Fila especially, and we've had about all this relief that was released here. And so far, there's nothing. And it's how many days from now they haven't received anything yet. So every night on the radio, I keep saying be patient. And I know that it's not <laughs> people would, you know, <laughs> really, it's not easy. So, yeah, that's yeah. all we can do for people. All right. Well, thank you very much, Lee. Thank you. And um, as she said, uh, the resilience of the people here is amazing. Uh, they're patiently waiting for the aid to arrive. They hear the planes. They know it's here. And so it's just up to the leadership to try and make some decisions and get this stuff out to the people. We're hoping that by putting this on the air, by showing what's happening on the ground here, that we could prevent this from happening again in another community similar to this, in another situation similar to this, and possibly prepare this community for it happening again sometime in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everybody. This is Peter, and uh, he's been helping out with some of the medical services and has just come back from a trip out to the, uh, some of the outer lying villages from Port Villa. And what were you finding out there from a, a medical standpoint? Um, we're seeing a huge amount of red eye, skin rash, diarrhea, uh, range of minor injuries, uh, as well as flu breakouts, um, other unknown diseases that we, we can't diagnose as yet. Uh, a huge amount of hungry and dehydrated people. Uh, villages that are completely flattened, people with no shelter. In some places we went around on East Aparte today, 90% of homes are completely gone. We've covered a huge amount of ground over the last few days and been first response out to a number of different villages. And out east is inexcusable why people aren't out there. People with clipboards and pens have got there, but they haven't brought anything with them. And now people are really getting angry. It's quite depressing to be honest. It's, it's sort of hit us and knocked us around a bit coming back because it's close, what, 25, 30 k's away and things haven't gone through. They said people have come a few days ago and over the last few days and they said they'll be at least a week before they can deliver aid. You know, we're not trying to support them for the next year. We're trying to make sure they don't die in the next week from all these different diseases that are breaking out. And is it your opinion that it's the assessment process that is slowing everything up? Um, I have to be careful in this part because I know the process which they're trying to achieve and I really understand that and I believe in the process of what, what they're trying to achieve. But you need to give the people hope. You need to give them the right information. You know, if they're telling them straight information as soon as they get there, saying, we'll be back at this time with this stuff, with this equipment, what else do you need? Give the people some hope. Give them, give them the information straight up. That's all they want. Yeah. They don't want just to be left in the dark. You know, left out there to say, look, you might get here yeah, at some point in the next couple of weeks. Now, everybody here understands that there has to be a process, that there has to be a legitimate um, Control. controlled delivery system. But for some reason, it seems as though that is the major um, hold up in actually getting water and basic necessities to the villagers. And at this point, um, it appears as though diseases are starting to become a problem. Um, it's five days after the cyclone, and, um, and yet still nothing seems to be getting out there. So our whole goal with this video and with Peter talking to us is to try and um, make things start to happen as soon as they can. Get the decisions made so that things are getting out there. Yeah. So thank you very much, Peter, for helping us you know, see what's going on. And, um, and hopefully the stuff will start streaming out very soon. Yeah, we'd love that to happen tomorrow <laughs> or tonight. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Okay, everybody, now I'm talking to Michael Benjamin, the head of operations at Pro Medical, and he's been out in the field a bit and has seen a few of the things that are going on, and he wants to tell us a few things about what he's seen. What do I say? We've been probably through one of the most frightening experiences I've ever been through. You may have been in your boat a bit more, but uh, it's probably one of the most terrifying experiences I've ever been through. I've been in ambulance 21 years, and this scared the hell out of me. Since, uh, since Saturday, Pro Medicals came back to work on Saturday morning once the wind died down and 
we tried to get back to our normal operations. Uh, we're responding to all the normal cases, but on a greater level. I think from uh, we, we're now getting the cyclone cases as well as the normal everyday cases. People still get sick. Our guys are going out there delivering water, food, medical supplies, doing health checks and assessments on people. We transported a few back who we found have been injured or unwell. And what we're finding now is that uh, there are kids out there that are starting to get the gastro and dehydration and uh, diarrhoea and those sort of long-term medical problems. Yes, we've gone through a disaster, but the next disaster is the medical conditions that, that happen because there of... There are a result of dehydration and, and diarrhoea and gastro, etc. Hygiene is a big one. Yeah. You know, we, we've heard reports up up uh, on the east coast that people are boiling salt water because they haven't got water, so that's why we're getting water up there. Yeah. And that's really dangerous. And, and call, call for help if you, if you need it. That's one of the big messages. We've heard of people, uh, unfortunately a young baby that died in the village recently, they, they weren't aware of that they could get help. So they could call in your number? Call in 115, it's a free number, you don't need credit on your phone. Yeah. Um, so if you call 115, tell us where you are, tell us what the problem is, and ProMedical will come out. There is no fee whatsoever at the moment. We are, it's, this is a disaster, we're here to help everybody. So you're being more than just an ambulance service at the moment? You're, uh... We are, we're, we're now doing that relief outreach thing. So we're going to start going to villages and doing our outreach service. Just to try to prevent that next stage that is going to come along. Yeah, uh, yeah. The next stage, you don't want an epidemic, epidemic of gastro. What you're saying is that the emergency is imminent for a further health problems. It is, and, and I attend briefings and meetings every day about this, and, and the relief is there, and the agencies are mobilising, and I'm I'm hoping that over the next day or so that these relief funds will get, these relief will get out there. But you said there's been some other interesting things that have happened. There's there has. There's some good news stories. And amongst yeah. all this, since the cyclone, Crown Medical's delivered four babies. Yeah. Three of them have been called Pam. I think that's quite humorous. <laughs> well, my friend, <laughs> thank you very much for all that you're doing. Yeah, good friend for a um, long time. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're very much hoping that, uh, that the aid is going to get there quickly so that these guys don't wind up with more emergencies on their hands. But um, they'll handle it if they do. Thank you very much. Mark. No worries. Thanks, man. All right. Hi, everybody. We're here with Wilson. Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, where are you from, Wilson? What, I'm, what? I'm from the north of this island. It's from the Shepherd Island. The Shepherd Islands. The Shepherd Islands. And have you had any news from the Shepherd Islands? Uh, in the Shepherd Islands and my own islands, around the islands, we only have three houses left with nine people dying. Oh, that's... Only three houses left. Every house is already gone. How, how is your family now? Oh, my family is living. They don't have any more homes. Yeah. They're living without homes. Uh, they know we, we heard about AIDS are coming, but we don't receive anything yet. Yeah, okay. But you live here in Afate, right? I live in Afate. Yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, Man Place. At, at Man Place. Yes. And have you experienced, has the aid come to your house or anything? Or? Uh, we saw the planes, the aeroplanes are flying, the Navy planes are flying all over the place. We hear that the, the aids are coming. We, had, we hear that the, the donations going to help us, but we didn't even see anything else. The day before yesterday, we just have the water and we don't have the power yet. And uh, at the moment, we still left of the we still we still left with the some of the foods we being maybe some maybe some around about this week next week we don't have any more foods and uh, every food in the garden are already gone. Yeah, the gardens the pork, were ruined. The banana, all these, the coconut already gone. But we we decided to go to the shops, but from the, all the Chinese shops, the rice, all these foods of all all wet. So we we heard about the the aids are coming from Australia, New Zealand, but the, we saw, we saw the the plane of flying, but. We didn't show any, any aids yet. We know that the Red Cross and the Save the Children and a number of other aid organizations are trying their very best and the government is trying its very best yes. to start getting the food and all of the stuff that has been flown in yes. out to the peoples. Well, thank you very much, Wilson. Thank you very much. And as I say, I believe all of the stuff is about to come out and get to you. Thank you very much. All thank right, you. brother. Thank you. <laughs> so there you go, guys. There's a, a few looks from expats and from Nivanawatu who are talking about how they see the picture and 
we're hoping that by posting something on social media that it will spur some action from the government and the agencies to help trim the cumbersomeness of the assessment and evaluation and distribution of all of the aid that the international community has been so generous in giving. Um, right now, the villages are in desperate need of this bottleneck to burst and to have the gear start going out to villages as quickly as possible. And these sorts of storms are going to be happening not only in this community, but in communities around the globe more and more. We are all aware of that. And so if by making a presentation that shows what the little problems are, what is happening on the ground here in Vanuatu, if that presentation can make a change in how this sort of situation is prepared for and can stop this particular type of bottleneck in the future for all the other undeveloped nations that have this sort of storm come and hit them and all of the other emergency situations that are going to happen around our planet, then we've done what we intended to do.